This spot, 400 Beacon Street in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, is where Mary Baker Eddy lived and worked during the crowning years of her mission to mankind. Supporting her in that mission were personal assistants, secretaries, and metaphysical workers, housekeepers, groundskeepers, coachmen, cooks, the household family who, out of love for their leader, helped make this a place that reflected their leader's love of home. It was this home, Mrs. Eddy was referring to, when she called for mankind to praise and love the spot where God dwells most conspicuously in his reflection of love and leadership. God always has headquarters, she remarked to one of her household. It is a special, God-given privilege to be in this house. What does it mean to us today to be in this house? Visitors often tell what being here has meant to them. In their words, learning about Mrs. Eddy's trials, persistence, and fearless moves forward, and her willingness to leave her personal desires behind, standing in the spot where momentous events took place, quote, has taken it all to a higher level. One young visitor wrote that the experience made him, quote, suddenly aware of my obligation as a young Christian scientist to share it with the world. Thank you again for this life-changing opportunity. Visitors to this house in years, even centuries to come, will be able to experience that sense of a life-changing opportunity and, being inspired by Mrs. Eddy's history, find ways to help the cause of Christian science. Mrs. Eddy herself asked, Could any greater help be given to the cause than by helping its leader? Helping our leader is at the heart of restoring her home for present and future generations as Longyear has been doing for the other Mary Baker Eddy historic houses in its collection. In this way, Longyear helps ensure that the connection between Christian science and its discoverer, founder, and leader will not be lost sight of. Sometimes it seems the winds of time have other plans for this house. New England's freeze-thaw cycles and northeast storms of snow, rain, ice beat on it as if to pull it down. With conservation and care by the Mother Church, Mrs. Eddy's home has weathered the hundred-plus years since she lived here. Now, it's in long years' hands. What will it take for this priceless landmark of Christian science to weather the next hundred years and beyond? It will take a lot. Well aware of the home's structural needs as it took over responsibility for its survival and restoration, Longyear got right to work. We rebuilt all four leaking chimneys right away. Then in 2014 and 15, aided by generous donor support and a major grant from the Massachusetts Cultural Council, other critical needs were tackled in Phase 1 of the Restoration Project. Ahead lie the next steps, Phase 2. Pamela Partridge is Longyear Museum's Historic House team leader. Projects in this phase may sound mundane, mere nuts and bolts, but that's not likely the way they would have sounded to Mrs. Eddy's general handyman, John Salkow. Salkow's daily work with rug beater or sledgehammer, with gutters, shutters, or plumbing, in Mrs. Eddy's home, was in his words an opportunity to serve her great cause. Later, doing maintenance work at the Mother Church, Salkow tells us, though my tasks for the Mother Church are humble, I do them now as I did when I served our leader, with a heart full of love for Mary Baker Eddy and a reverent gratitude for all the blessings which Christian science has brought to me. In that spirit, Longyear has taken on the work of restoring and preserving the bricks and mortar, the timbers and utilities of the place that, to Mrs. Eddy, represented spiritual concepts of home and headquarters. In Phase 2, the exterior envelope, roof, walls, windows, and interior workings, wiring, plumbing, heating, cooling, security, and other systems, must be repaired or reconstructed or installed to establish this as a house built for the ages. To get an idea of the scope of the work to be done, here are a few highlights from a tour with facilities team leader, John Aliotto. In Phase 1, repointing of the south wall and a portion of the north 
corrected serious deterioration. In phase two, we need to finish the job. On large portions of the main house and the wing, which Mrs. Eddy added to provide for her staff, crumbling mortar still allows water and melting ice to invade the structure. This house has 115 windows. These windows need to be removed from the frames, taken to a shop, and completely restored. The glass will be reset in new glazing compound, and they'll be repainted, returned, and rehung in a restored frame. Foundation work and drainage are needed to prevent groundwater from causing dampness in the basement. The main issues on the exterior are in plain sight. In the interior, much of what needs to be done lies out of sight. Inside the walls, within the ceilings, and under the floorboards. The network of wires, pipes, and ducts that make the house function. When this house was originally electrified, Thomas Edison himself was still in business. A lot has changed since then. The wiring in this house needs to change too. The fire control system, fire suppression system of the day was a hose with a nozzle. In the proposed mist system, we will have sprinkler heads throughout the building and the hallways, and a fine mist will snuff out a fire without causing extensive damage to the interior of the building. To protect the house and its contents and to provide a comfortable environment for visitors in all seasons, we'll be installing air-conditioned climate control. Laws require that public spaces like 400 Beacon Street be made accessible to all. That will necessitate a working elevator. Unfortunately, all of the machinery connected with this elevator is no longer functioning and cannot be repaired. However, the shaft, which goes from the basement to the third floor, is available for use and we are planning on retrofitting it and installing a new cab and new machinery and possibly incorporating some of the elements of the historic elevator into the new cab. With that means of access, every visitor can experience Mrs. Eddy's modest suite of rooms on the second floor and the cozy bedrooms on the third floor and so take in the whole story this house has to tell. Stone and foundation work, windows and drainage, electrical wiring, fire suppression, security, climate control, elevator access, these are a few of the major tasks needed to restore and preserve this special place so it can continue into the future bearing witness to Mrs. Eddy's story. Lending his expertise to each phase of research and restoration is preservation architect Gary Wolf of Wolf Architects. Longyear is asking, how do we convey to the visitor something about the lives and the spirituality and the experience that occurred in this house? But the fact is, we have the opportunity because it wasn't converted to other uses and it wasn't demolished, we have the opportunity to, to bring it back and to tell these stories. It's not a simple task. It's complicated and it takes a lot of extra skill and there's no question that uh, to do this is more expensive and more time consuming and, and much more demanding than to go out and build a new office building, for instance. With its immense scope, this project might seem impossible, but we're encouraged by Mrs. Eddy's words, the devotion of thought to an honest achievement makes the achievement possible. Sandra Houston is Longyear's president and executive director. When interior walls, ceilings, and floors are finished and closed up, Longyear looks forward to restoring rooms on every floor. Visitors will then be able to see this home as it was when Mrs. Eddy and her household family lived and worked here together. At that time, these rooms and corridors were alive with vital activity. People busy with tasks in support of Mrs. Eddy and demonstrating daily what she taught. Today, 
you find mostly empty rooms, devoid of furniture or other signs of life. As you walk these hallways, past vacant rooms, your footsteps echo from the bare walls. In Mrs. Eddy's suite, you find some replicas of her furniture, staged here for a long year documentary film, not the real thing. Phase two prepares for the time that that will all change. Unlike many historic houses, Mrs. Eddy's furniture for this house still exists. In 2016, the Mother Church gave the original furnishings to Longyear. In August of that year, we carefully moved the nearly 150 pieces of Mrs. Eddy's furniture to the museum, cataloged each piece, and stored each one in specially prepared collection storage rooms. Behind the doors of Longyear's repository are objects valued because they recall for us Mrs. Eddy, her work, and the workers who helped her shape the Christian Science Movement. Calvin Fry's fine roll-top desk, given to him by the Board of Directors to show their appreciation for his years of devotion to their leader, rests on its designated shelf. Mrs. Eddy's whatnot, which she passed by in her parlor every day, sits here in the shadows. Nearby is the rocking chair from the West Room, where at twilight she often rested from her day's work. The rattan chair made for her by inmates at Concord State Prison in gratitude for worship services she provided them. The desk at which she revised her writings issued bylaws for the church manual and wrote the order to start the Christian Science Monitor is stored here. And the chair in which our leader sat each day carrying out the work God had given her to do has its temporary place here in the collection. When the messy job of reconstruction of 400 Beacon Street is complete, the last bits of plaster and sawdust cleared away, all these furnishings will be restored to where Mrs. Eddy once placed them in her home, which will again be filled with things that recall her inspiring life and the inspired lives of her household. For now, securely locked away in long years' vaults, they wait. Mrs. Eddy loved home and she loved her homes. She cared about the furnishings, the size and arrangement of her rooms, where each piece of art was placed, each ornament displayed. Her rooms represented her thought, and it's easy to see her love of beauty, order, and harmony expressed in this home. The workers at 400 Beacon Street knew that it was a great privilege to be called to serve their leader, to do their part to support her as she carried out her God-given mission. They knew that what was taking place here in this house was vitally important to the progress of mankind, and they knew that they were making history. All of us at Longyear feel it is a great privilege to be doing our part to preserve that history through the restoration of our leader's final residence, through the accurate preservation of the homes in which Mary Baker Eddy lived and worked, we're helping to ensure that her efforts for mankind, her love and leadership, will not be forgotten or marginalized. We invite you to join us in this important work. <laughs>